Hey guys, Dr. Gretchen here, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis specialist at The Missing Link. I want to talk to you today about ATA 188. As you likely know, there are no therapies or disease modifying therapies on the market right now that stop progressive MS or even reverse progressive MS. And there's also no disease modifying therapies currently that target the cause of MS. Everything that's been released thus far targets at reducing the inflammation until now. ATA-188 is a therapy that is currently being tested to actually treat the cause of MS, or as I should say, one of the causes. As we know, there are many things that can cause multiple sclerosis, but research has suggested that one of the major causes is the Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV, or the kissing disease. Research has been so convincing that drug companies are actually starting to look into treatment of EBV as a way to treat multiple sclerosis. And there have been no medications up until now to treat the Epstein-Barr virus, which is why this is so exciting. If this is your first time hearing about the correlation between the Epstein-Barr virus and multiple sclerosis, or if you haven't been updated on the newest research that came out this past January of 2022, I'm going to link a video up top here where you can see my review on that study. It's really important. It basically reviews exactly how they found this correlation between EBV and MS and exactly how convincing it was. So how does EBV actually drive the process of multiple sclerosis? When you have MS, your immune system attacks itself. It's an autoimmune disease and that's what it means. It attacks your other cells when it goes to clear something that's in your brain, in your spinal cord. So the idea is that when you have Epstein-Barr virus, you have these cells that contain EBV. So your immune system goes to fight it off, but while it's fighting those cells, it's also attacking other things that it shouldn't be, like myelin. Therefore, driving the progression of multiple sclerosis, even if you have no new lesions. So in order to stop the progression of MS, we would need two things. First, we would need a medication that goes into our brain. And thus far, zero medications do that. So this is actually very rare. So we would need the medication to go up into our brain. And the second thing we would need is a medication that can target the cells that contain EBV and essentially shut those cells down. That's where ATA-188 comes into play. ATA-188 is an anti-EBV T-cell therapy that works just in that way that I was describing. It goes into the brain and it attacks those cells that harbor EBV. So essentially what's happening is the cells that contain EBV are being attacked and shut down. And when that happens, there's nothing else attacking the myelin. Because of that, there's the potential for the myelin to heal and maybe even regrow. The company developing ATA-188 is called Atara Biotherapeutics, and they are looking at this specific drug specifically in people who have progressive forms of multiple sclerosis. They have mentioned that they're hoping in the future to look at ATA-188 with people who have relapsing forms of MS, but for now, it's just progressive. This drug is currently being tested in clinical trial, so it has not been FDA approved for any form of MS yet. So let's talk about exactly what they did in this clinical trial. The researchers found healthy individuals who have had the Epstein-Barr virus. And what they did was they took blood samples from these people, and from those blood samples, they took their T cells, and they went through a whole process to make sure that they had the right T cells that they needed. From there, these T cells were actually HLA matched to the recipient. The recipients were people who have progressive forms of MS and confirmed that they also had EBV. 
the HLA process is human leukocyte antigen. So this means that the T cells from the donor were actually matched in a very similar way to people who get organ transplants to the recipient. They wanted to make sure it was a good match, not just randomly throwing T cells everywhere. There were 24 participants in this study. 13 of them were men, 11 of them were women. The average age was 56. Average duration of time that they've been diagnosed with MS was 10 years. They all had progressive forms of MS and most of them had no new signs of new lesions. And the average EDSS score was six, meaning they needed a cane to walk. However, it ranged from four, meaning you do not need a mobility aid, to six and a half, meaning you need a walker to get around. These 24 participants were split into four different groups of six people. Essentially, each group got a different dose of the drug and they were tracked for up to three years. Now, initially the study was just supposed to be 12 months, but they saw such great results as I'm about to show you that they decided to extend it for up to four years. So let's talk about the results they found after one year of this trial. 20 out of the 24 people completed the entire thing. That's because four participants actually got worse. So when that happened, they stopped participating in the study. Of the 20 people that finished, 13 remained stable. 13 people with progressive MS remained stable. How amazing is that? What's even more amazing is that seven people with progressive MS actually improved. This is very, very rare. So seven people improved after 12 months and two more people actually improved after the 12 month period. So basically what they are concluding is that if you are going to improve while on this drug, it will most likely happen within the first 12 months. What's even more exciting is that the seven people that improved in this study were followed up with consistently over up to three years, and six out of those seven people maintained their improvement, meaning they didn't backslide, meaning that improvement that they did see maintained, which is amazing. So let's talk about these improvements. You might be wondering, well, what were they? How did they improve? They improved in a couple of different ways. So one way that they improved was by still needing their mobility device, but only for longer distances. There was a specific person who was using a cane all the time prior to the study, and she still had to use a cane, but only for longer distances. Another participant actually had to use a walker prior to the study, and after the one year, now they're just using a cane. And another person was using a cane, and now they don't have to use anything at all. Others that improved still had the same EDSS score, meaning they still had to use the same level of mobility aid or not a mobility aid if their EDSS was below a six, but they were walking faster. So that was another form of improvement. The only side effects that were noted was spasticity. They did note that one person did have a relapse, but they have reason to believe that this was actually due to some dental and respiratory issues that the patient was going through, not necessarily ATA-188. In addition to those physical improvements of requiring a lesser mobility aid or no mobility aid or improving your speed of walking, this study also looked at something called the magnetization transfer ratio or MTR. And this is something that actually measures the density of myelin. And what this study found was that those same seven people that had improvements from ATA-188 were the same seven people that had the highest increase in MTR, meaning they had the highest level of improvement of density in their myelin, meaning that remyelination could be occurring. I hope you guys are excited as I am about this study, but there are still some things to consider. First and foremost, it was a very small study. There were only 24 people initially enrolled and only 20 people that actually completed this study. In addition to that, it was only one year. That's a very short amount of time. But as I mentioned earlier, these results are so great that they actually are extending that trial for up to four years, and they actually have a phase two trial starting. It's called Embold, 
E-M-B-O-L-D. And in this study, they're going to be recruiting 80 people. 40 people will have a placebo drug and the other 40 people will have ATA-188. It's going to be randomized and a blind clinical trial so they won't know who's getting what. But after one year, everyone is going to get ATA-188. So even if you start in the placebo group, you will then get the true therapy after one year. If they find similar results with the phase two trial, the next process would be a phase three clinical trial. And this is where they would validate that ATA-188 actually does work for people with progressive MS. The reason I wanted to share this with you today is first and foremost, so you can maintain your education around what's happening in the clinical world of multiple sclerosis, but also just to keep an eye out for ATA-188. I wanted to bring it to your attention in case you hadn't heard of it, so that if you see people talking about this, if you see it on social media or in articles, look at it. Make sure you pay attention and, and stay up to date with it. You, of course, can always come back to my channel where I will be continuing to share updates.